you very much. Uh, I'd like to welcome to the stage the director of The Imitation Game, Morton Tildum. <laughs> welcome. Thank you very much. Welcome to the Apple Store. Thank you. Congratulations on this film. I, I know we're talking about this film pre the release, so I'm assuming nobody here has seen it. Has anyone happens to have seen it by some way? Ah, there are three people here who have seen it. Perhaps at the London Film Festival? Perhaps? Maybe we'll see. Um, but most of you won't know, so we'll have, to, we'll have to be a bit coy maybe about some of the story. But I mean, I mm -hmm. can say that it's a, it's a very intelligent thriller in some senses, although it's much more than that. Also, it's both a, it's both a tragedy and a celebration. What, what did you feel? Maybe that's a place to start, actually. What did you feel about that balance between it being a tragic story but also a celebration of a life which has been, um, well, certainly has been ignored up to a certain point? I mean, we wanted it to be... I mean, I, I don't, didn't want to make it dusty old history lesson kind mm. of film. I mean, I wanted it to be funny. I wanted it to be engaging. I wanted it to be thrilling because that's how I felt his life was. It was so, uh, it was such a unique and fascinating and special man. And I think his, his leg legacy deserves to be spread wide. And um, I mean, like most people, I, I mean, I, I love history. I thought I knew a lot about history. But I was shocked how much of Alan Turing's life I wasn't aware of. Uh, so uh, when I read the script, uh, and uh, I think that's to me he was a mystery, and uh, and that's why I wanted to make the movie sort of like an unraveling of a mystery of a puzzle. He was obsessed with puzzles, and and uh, this you know this thriller that became his life. This awkward mathematician who became this British super spy in many ways, involved in MI6 and, and, and in the center of all, uh, all this high top secrecy. Uh, you mentioned legacy there, and I mean, we're sitting here in the, the Apple store, so I think we should deal with legacy a bit more directly. I mean, we're, here we are, a place where modern computing meets the public, essentially. And Alan Turing, you, I think at the end of the film, Alan Turing is described as I'm probably paraphrasing, you know, the father of modern computing. I wonder if you could pick up on that and just explain. He was, he was 23 years old um, when he wrote a paper on computable numbers that theorized the computer. Uh, you know, this is in the 30s. Uh, and he actually theorized what a computer will be able to do and not be able to do, and it still holds through. It's what we call Turing compatible. Uh, just the idea of creating a machine that's not only prog programmable, but is reprogrammable, that can you know, make a calculation and then decide what to do next based on that calculation. I mean, those ideas were his. He was the first who came up with these thoughts, uh, which is remarkable uh, And at that age. And, and his achievements are, you know, so st staggering. He was obsessed with artificial intelligence and artificial life. And just to have those ideas and, 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 and these visions for the future uh, is remarkable. And it's not something that's directly addressed in the film, but I know that it has been said that even the Apple logo is inspired by Alan Turing's life. How much do you know that to be true or not, or it's a nice idea? Or I, don't, I don't know how much people know, but Alan Turing uh, took his life by taking a bite of a, an apple, uh, which he had covered in cyanide. So he took a bite of that, and that's how he, that's how he killed himself. Um, and there's this myth that that's the Apple logo we all have, is Alan Turing's suicide apple. Which is kind of mind-blowing uh, when you think about it. And we, we shot that in the film. We had that scene. Oh, really? Uh, in the scene. But first of all, Steve Jobs has gone public and said he wished it was true. Uh, unfortunately, it's not. Um, so we left it out. And, and uh, it, it uh, took the focus a little bit away from what you want. I mean, it's, it's not only just about Apple computers, even if it's today. It's, I mean, he's, he's a... He's, um, you know, he's sort of like the forefather for all computing. I mean, we, we sort of like owe him. Everybody, every time we pick up, you know, the thing we have in our pockets or in our in bags, you know, and use it, we should think about him because he started it all. He was, he was the one who, who envisioned this all and, and, and started this technology. Well, it's a great story, and as you say, it should be true, even, even, if, even if it isn't, like, like many great stories. We've got a couple of clips which we're going to see um, during this discussion. Then we're going to open things out to you for some questions. So do think of anything you'd like to ask. If we can see the first clip, thank you very much. It comes towards the beginning of the film, and it's when Alan Turing comes for an interview at Bletchley Park, where he later works within the code-breaking team. Uh, you, you mentioned earlier on, actually, that one of the things you wanted to achieve with the film was that it, it should be funny, and, and it, it certainly is, and a lot of that comes from the presentation of uh, Alan Turing's character, and certainly, actually, 
mm -hmm. as that scene goes on as well. I wonder, I wonder if you could talk about the 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 personality of Alan Turing as you wanted to explore it in the film, and, and, and so in, especially in terms of how he interacted with other people. I mean, he was the such a fascinating because he's such a you know many layered and complex character and and he's so strong and driven and almost arrogant and at the same time awkward and at times shy and fragile so this and you know and it's it's such a i wanted this movie to be sort of like a celebration of being different being unique and not you know sort of like outsiders and alan turing became sort of like this outsider's outsider He's a uh, you know, closeted gay man in a time when it was illegal and one who got involved in you know, extreme secrecy. You know, during MI6, during the time as Bletchley. Uh, his work was kept secret for you know, decades afterwards and, uh, and uh, nobody knew. Um, so so he's, he's this complex, fascinating man and his meeting with other people has, a, there's a lot of humor there because he, he really crashes with people and it is, I think his mind just works kind of differently. I, the way we, we, we thought about it is that it's almost like it, it goes in five different directions all at one time and, and uh, his, even his mouth can keep up with you know, his ideas and his, and, 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 uh, his thoughts. And it's been very fascinating for, for us to sort of like puzzle him together because there's no recording of how we talked and how we walked, how we moved, how we behaved. So we sort of like have to go by descriptions and what we had is written down and sort of like piece them together. Uh, and I think uh, Benedict does an extraordinary job. I mean, it, it's, I love shooting. It's like when you, the camera lingers on him, it's almost like you feel there's a million things going on behind the ice. So, so uh, Benedict is beautiful in it. Uh, how would you describe your, your relationship as an actor-director in terms of what, what Benedict Cumberbatch was looking from you uh, as a director or how, or, or how much you were really able to leave to him to... To, to decipher the character he wants to we, play, you have to work really close together the whole process. I mean, I I insisted on having rehearsals before, which is now getting more and more unusual. So we had three weeks of rehearsals to get this group together, and to really, in many ways, make do all the things you should not do, uh, make all the mistakes, and and create this atmosphere, create this like family unity bond where you could you you know it's okay to fall on your face and be stupid and try things and. And we can really, you know, push all the characters and figure out their relationships. And I think it was great for Benedict to also try out all the physicality of the part and, 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 uh, and uh, then talk about the script. And also have people, yells at people to give us sort of like lectures, you know, math and how the big machine worked, uh, which you'll see in the movie, uh, which was kind of frightening because you have this man coming up and he starts lecturing. And first of all, they're have panic in their eye when they start to explain it because it's really complicated. And then it goes five seconds and then you understand, I'm not gonna get anything of this uh, because it's so complex. And it's, um, no, so, so we have this, this, this process before we start filming, which is incredibly important for to sort of like get anybody on board and, 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 and to, to, you know, uh, find out all the relationship between the characters. So, 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 and, we just talked a lot, uh, but me and I, I've been lucky enough to have this wonderful cast. I mean, I'm Norwegian, and I came here and worked with this phenomenal British cast. I think sort of the, I, these amazing British actors, but in the combat, and Kira, who plays John Clark, uh, Charles Dance, as you saw, Mark Strong, Matthew Good, Alan Leach. I mean, it's, there's, I, I can't praise them enough, and they all, everybody wanted to do justice to Alan Turing. I think we all, sort of like fell in love with him a little bit and, and all wanted to do justice to him and the other characters at, at Bletchley Park who, who had this, you know, cruelly task of trying to crack Enigma, you know, they knew that people died every day. There was this insane pressure and, and uh, they did such a phenomenal job and it was so unthankful. They, everything was kept secret, everything was burnt. They didn't, you know, they were just sent home afterwards. As you say, it is a terrific cast, and it really—it's very much a case of a strong character at the heart of an ensemble in terms of the way the drama plays out. We're going to see uh, another clip, and this clip is when uh, Kira Knightley's character, Kira Knightley, plays Joan Clark when she's introduced to the story and also to to Alan Turing. So, if you can see the second clip, can please. I, can, can I say something sure. about before before you see the scene? Um, what you see here is a test, crossword test, which is actually true. Uh, Alan Turing recruited people to MI6 with a crossword puzzle, so he sent a crossword puzzle in the Times. And he said, if you can solve this in 10 minutes, please call this phone number. 
which is true. And the actual crossbow puzzle, which is in the film, is the one that I, Alan Turing made. And we all tried to solve it, and nobody was good. Uh, I was going to ask you, actually, whether you tried no. to. Who, who, who was best at it? Uh, Matthew Beard, I think, actually, is best. Who was, who was that? The Matthew Beard, who plays... Um, um, plays the young man, plays uh, Peter Hilton. Oh, yes, yeah, yeah. Thank you. Well, let, let, let's see that clip and you'll see the uh, introduction of the crossword puzzle as well as Joan Clark. Because you said at some point there that you saw this film as a, a film about outsiders. I mean, and Kira Knight is Clara to Joan Clark. I mean, she, she's a woman in an intensely male world. I mean, she was a woman in a time when being intelligent wasn't really appreciated for a woman. Um, she was not allowed... She was, you know, in superbly inte smart mathematician who was... Uh, not allowed to work as a cryptographer or anything as because she was a woman. Uh, she had to be a clerk or a linguist. And it was Alan Turing who brought her up uh, to work in the end, after a long time, to work with the other men. Uh, uh, and, you know, it, it's kind of strange because she would have been, after the war, I mean, she, she could have been a math professor. She could have been so much, but she was not really allowed it. Again, because it was, you know, women should not do that. Uh, at the time, and um, I th there's, a, there's a beautiful friendship that actually led to them being engaged for six months, um, even if he was a gay man and she was not, because they were sort of like with these two outsiders who found each other, and she became incredibly important to him uh, during that time, and uh, they were both not, you know, they didn't really fit in, uh, none of them, and, and they, they, you know, they really saw that in each other, uh, and uh, I think Kira could really relate to that, and 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 I, she's just wonderful as, as as John Clark, and there's this incredible chemistry. It's sort of like, sort of like a mo very modern couple in a way, because because he, he you know proposed to her, and afterwards he said, "I'm gay, so I'm not sure if we should be engaged," and she said, "I don't care." Uh, you know, it was sort of like beyond that. You, you mentioned how you, in your rehearsal, you had lectures from mathematicians or scientists coming in to inform you before you went into the project. I think one of the things the film does very well is not lecture us in terms of its ideas. I mean, Alan Turing is obviously dealing with incredibly complicated mathematics, scientific ideas, but you don't present them to us in essay form, to put it crudely. I mean, did, did you feel that you... you know, I mean, this is as much a question on behalf of the writer, I suppose, that you wanted to embed the ideas into the character, into the story. I mean, we, 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 we talked about it a lot. I mean, it, it's, it's, we didn't want to sort of like drag down the narrative by going, you know, specifics on the math and on the science. But at the same time, we wanted it to be in the movie. So there are discussions about, about it. You will feel it. And also, the way he broke Enigma is extremely fascinating because Enigma is unbreakable. The thing that he actually invents is what we watch called crib-based uh, decryption, which means that he finds the human flaw. He understands that, okay, there actually is some words which you can expect to be there. So he has this machine trying to find the words that he thinks will be there in decrypted messages. And that's how we break them, which actually was really, you know, a new way of looking at it. And that's, that's how we did it. And that whole process, how it comes to that, is, is, is part of the movie. Um, so... Um, and I think Alan Turing is also very f as fascinating as a philosopher as he is a mathematician. I mean, his ideas on what it means to the imitation game, which is the paper he wrote, deals with what it means to be human, what it means to think, um, what makes us human. Because uh, he's, you know, and it comes to that. So, how can we say a machine cannot be human if it then can think to a level which we can? And what does it mean to be that? And it's. It's, it's, it's really fascinating. Uh, you know, we, can only, we are only human to the degree that we can convince other people that we are. And, you know, it, what makes us then different from a machine. Uh, so his, his, his thoughts and ideas are really fascinating. We've only got five minutes left, so I'd like to open things up to the audience. I believe there's a microphone going around. So is, who'd like to ask a question? Who'd like to kick things off? There must be a question out there lurking. Anything? Hi, um, you've talked a little bit about the sort of mathematical elements implementing to the film. Was was most of that sort of um, built into the script, or was there a lot that you had to sort of think about with um, sort of expert advice to try and sort of get that accurate? Um, we did a lot of research uh, during the script making. I mean, Graham Moore, who wrote the script, did a lot of that beforehand. So it was all it was all part of the script. We we, we come we come there So so. Um, I think both Graham and, and we, we spend a lot of time reading up on it so it's to make sure that it is accurate and we actually represent his ideas. Um, the math expert we had was like, there's a lot of 
you know, math symbols. Every time there's anything like a number or anything, a equation or anything in, in the film, we wanted to have somebody there who actually could make sure that we did it right. So, so uh, it's, it is... And it's, he wanted to make it as accurate as possible. Like all the Enigma machines you see in the movie is actual Enigma machines from the Nazis that was used during the war. The big machine he built is based on the real machine he built. Uh, it's uh, the school Alan Turing went to, the scenes from him and when he went to, was at school when he was a young boy, uh, is the actual school he went to, which are a lot of the interiors at Bletchley. So a lot of that was really important for us, that make things accurate. This is, you know, we wanted to do justice to his legacy and make it right. Thank you very much. Is that another question down here? Hello, good evening. Uh, actually, do you have any advice for new directors and actors? Wow, that's advice. a big one. That's a big one. Uh, just something, you know, uh, just one I'd, advice. I'd, there's a, there's a mil every, everybody is individual. Every, every actor, every director has become a director or an actor by following their own path. I think the only thing you can do is to be passionate and really true to what you really care about. Don't try to do anything which you don't believe in because you think it's the right thing to do. Uh, and just follow your own, you know, your own way and your own instinct and, and your own passion. I mean, it's, the, it's, it's an art form and there's no right, wrong, right way and there's no wrong way. The only thing you can be is be passionate and just do things you feel is important. I'm going to, we're going to have to finish. Oh, no, there is no one more question there. Please, yes. Let, let's get the microphone along. Thank you. Um, anyway, um, I would like to thank you um, uh, first uh, for giving a hero of, uh, well, LGBT community. Um, mm. Because uh, there is not much of uh, movies about uh, uh, some sort of people like this. And also my question. Um, what besides a book of, uh, uh, from Andrew Hodges um, inspired you to direct this uh, movie? Uh, besides from the book, I mean, thank you. Th 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 thank you. Uh, the thing that inspired me to do it is, is his whole life story is so fascinating. It's, uh, it's not really, Andrew Hodgins wrote a very important biography on, on his life, but the way we structure the movie is unique to this film. Uh, Andrew Hodgins more gives sort of like a, you know, uh, a telling of his whole life in more detail, which you can do in, in the book. Uh, one of the things is, of course, the, the, the great injustice that happened to him. You know, he was literally crucified by the own government that he actually saved uh, being a gay man and then uh, convicted for being gay in gross indecency and having to choose between prison or chemical castration. It was a time when, when being gay was looked upon as a disease, something that could be cured. So medical treatment was, was something you could choose to sort of like cure you. From from which ravaged his body, ravaged his mind, and this brilliant, brilliant genius uh, could not really work anymore, and 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 ending up killing himself. So so, in many ways, a tragedy. This man shortened the war. Church in, uh, Winston Churchill has said that Alan Turing did the single most important achievement during the war. Uh, he his achievement shortened the war. He saved millions of lives. And because it was kept secret, he didn't, never got an official thank. It will, and he was being convicted just because he was gay. And it's, it's injustice thought it is just staggering and mind-blowing. Thank you very much. We will have to bring things to an end. I just want to remind people that the film does open in cinemas this Friday, November the 14th. So please do see it if you've been inspired by what Morton had to say about the film tonight. Morton Tilden, thank you very much for the invitation. My game. pleasure. Thank, thank you, thank you so much for coming. Evening. Thank you.